Good morning, Geodians. This is Mike Horton, project creator of the GeoNet Network. And today I am going to talk about solar weather and how GeoNet can help farmers deal with solar storms. So I think the first thing that might come to mind is why would farmers care about solar storms? And to talk about that, let's look at what happened in 2024. So during 2024, there was a major solar weather event. And we can see here a article written by Farm Progress. So Farm Progress is a major news and media organization that uh, speaks to farmers in North America and worldwide. And they talked about uh, the headline here is that the 2024 solar storm could cost American farmers $500 million in profits. And the story goes on to talk about why that is. And so first of all, it highlights that 70% of farmers in North America are using uh, auto guidance with precision GPS. And then it highlights that the solar storm occurred during the crucial planting season. And then the third point is that during that solar storm, there were a large long durations of GPS outages of this precision GPS. So what's important to hear to remember is that the type of precision GPS that was used um, uses a GPS correction method called PPP or PPP RTK, and it is delivered by satellite. And that is different than how GeoNet works. And we'll talk about how GeoNet uh, is unique in its ability to mitigate solar weather and deliver better reliability. Um, and that's what we will kind of go through in detail here. Another thing, though, before I dive into that, I want to point out the 70%. There are 30% of farmers in North America that don't benefit from precision guidance. And we had a webinar just two weeks ago with GPS World Magazine, the USDA, uh, Deep Sand, and agri-automation to GeoNet customers, and we talk specifically about how to address the other 30% and to get those farmers using precision GPS because um, there are many, many benefits in terms of ROI and economics, fuel savings, fertilizer savings, spraying savings, um, and just general improvements in yield that can occur when you use precision GPS. So be sure to check that out. We'll link that below. <clears throat> Now, with respect to the 2024 season and this uh, half a billion dollar economic loss uh, incurred, um, you know, why is the planting season an important factor in that? Well, the planting season is a very crucial and narrow window in which uh, plant uh, farmers get the seeds into the ground. And in particular, in more northern locations like North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana, um, the ground kind of thaws later in the season. So then the window becomes even shorter. So it's really crucial that when the window opens up, they're able to get out there and plant. And they do that using you know, these uh, semi-automated machines and very efficient operations that have been honed over the years. But during the solar storm in 2024, they couldn't do it. And that's very expensive. And in fact, if you talk to a farmer, even a modest sized farmer, they'll tell you it costs like $10,000 a day for downtime. So you can see why, you know, first of all, if it's $10,000 a day, and losses to not be able to plant, you can understand why precision guidance and, and precision GPS is so important to farmers. And while they're willing to pay big money and do pay a big money for it today, um, you know, 70% are willing to pay, pay big money for the equipment and the subscriptions because it's just so important. So, you know, why did this happen? And, and how does GeoNet help mitigate um, and deal with solar weather maybe in a better way than some of these systems with the satellite delivery uh, do. And to understand that, we need to dig in a bit into how this sort of satellite delivery mechanism works. Um, the satellite delivery mechanism is delivered over L-band. That L-band is basically the same frequencies that the normal GPS antenna or GNSS antenna can receive on. Um, and so that allows it to sort of get correction data without an internet connection. So that's the, the big benefit. Um, and the way it works is you start off with a network of ground stations just like GeoNet. So, in fact, some of GeoNet's customers purchase data from GeoNet globally, like some of the global station data as well. Some of the regional station data will be acquired by customers providing these satellite services um, in order uh, as a kind of raw material, if you will. Um, but that's just the first piece in the satellite uh, delivery correction puzzle. 
Um, the second piece is that that data is then transmitted to a data center where it's crunched and it's turned into a set of data products that kind of model globally the satellite errors. And that includes the clock error, orbit error, some advanced things like code bias, um, phase bias terms, and then the space weather model for the ionosphere and the troposphere. Then that data goes from the data center, it is uploaded back to the satellites, um, different satellites actually. These satellites typically run by a company called Inmarsat, and the company's providing these L-band correction services, rent space on those satellites, rent bandwidth on those satellites to beam it back down. And so these services that we're talking about, these satellite correction services, they have their own brand names. There's like Starfire, RTX, Terrastar, and several others out there that um, are really basically a proprietary data stream being sent down over in Marsat to the same company's uh, GPS receivers on the tractors, okay? So that's how it works. It allows you to get the correction data without an internet connection, and that um, historically has been important in order for farmers to utilize precision guidance, okay? All sounds great, but there, there are several major uh, problems. So this L-band correction um, being delivered by Inmarsat, it's very, it's a very narrow pipe. How narrow are we talking about? Like 1,200 bits per second, um, which if you think about it, this is like old school Hayes modem. I don't know for those that are old enough to remember when you had, you took your phone, your old dial-up phone, and you plugged it into like ear, earphone things, and it turned into a modem, and you connected to the bulletin board. That's kind of what you've got, and you only got it one direction. It's just coming down. So it's really slow, and actually a modern GNSS receiver can listen to and hear 40-plus satellites at a time on three different frequencies. So there's a lot of data to try to get over that. you got orbital parameters for all the satellites, clocks, uh, biases, um, and then, of course, the all-important uh, ionospheric and tropospheric correction data. That's all got to kind of somehow come through this 1,200-bit-per-second pipe. It means it really can't all get through, and it also means you have to wait a long time. So sort of no matter what, you're waiting a lot longer than you would say wait with GeoNet to get to a high accuracy uh, correction. And, um, you know, that's annoying in all cases. But, uh, you know, as we'll talk about during a solar storm, it's, it's a real problem. And the second big problem is that the, the beam size from these L-band satellites is wide. So you're getting a big area is getting the same data. So you can think about like this beam coming down from the satellites is sort of moving across as the satellite moves. But fundamentally, and, and they're, they're changing the parameters, they're changing the space weather parameters as the beam moves to be appropriate for the region on the ground. But that region on the ground can be 1,000 kilometers wide. The same data is going to the tractor in Billings, as in Fargo, as in, as in Sioux Falls. So you're not getting a very localized model. Um, it's more of a general, regional, or even global model. And that's where things can really fall apart during a solar storm. You have basically the ionosphere kind of going crazy, both in time and also geospatially, right? The ionosphere is this weak plasma. So think of it like a burning fire. It's burning hotter here or cooler here, up and down, up and down based on, on uh, from, from the effect of the solar storm. And you're not able to kind of cancel that out and maintain that high precision lock. And hence, during the solar storm, of 2024, many, many farmers sort of faced a timeout during this crucial period, um, and that then causes downstream problems for the rest of the season and economic losses, and already, you know, pretty tough uh, business just, just got a lot tougher. So how does GeoNet help all of this? Well, first of all, the GeoNet has unprecedented station density. So um, let's take, say, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, where we have dozens of stations. And that region, the farm tractor, when it connects to GeoNet, is nearby. So it's getting the most localized correction possible. And the second thing is we are connecting over IP. Um, and so we're able to transmit all of the data. A minimum data rate would be 100 times higher than that satellite L-band correction, meaning we can get a ton of data back to the tractor so it can correct its accuracy very quickly and maintain it more reliably than you would with the satellite correction mechanism. Um, and that's really what gives you this robustness. So what about that whole problem of can? how does the tractor connect to the internet? Well, a couple of things have happened since a lot of this earlier equipment was built and sold. 
One is cellular coverage has improved. But two, and this has had a big impact, is the availability of Starlink. So Starlink puts a nice big fat pipe out, 50 megabits per second plus, very low latency, and then that can be used to deliver the GeoNet data very reliably to the tractor. And then on top of that, it can be used for other things, such as more advanced autonomy services that involve, say, cameras, radars, LIDARs, um, as well as just giving like the farmer good internet on the machine. So these are all big benefits. And at the end of the day, a Starlink subscription plus a GeoNet subscription is still lower cost than these L-band services. So you're getting essentially a much more accurate, higher speed, more reliable, more robust against solar weather service for a lower cost. So if you're a farmer or have a tractor and want to try this out, you're welcome to come get a free uh, trial subscription from GeoNet by just going to geonet.com slash intrip. And uh, if you have a machine and you're not sure how to connect it, we will connect you with a local dealer who can help you get your uh, equipment connected. Almost all tractor guidance equipment does support RTK. Um, some of them will unfortunately charge you an unlock fee because uh, they're going to lose that valuable subscription. They would charge a one-time unlock fee to open up the RTK. But even with that, it is often a very easy value proposition to switch. And so be sure to check that out. And again, we can connect you with a local expert to help you get a, unlocked if that is a challenge. Um, so that's it for today. And I hope you've enjoyed this podcast, diving into the specifics of solar weather and how it affects farmers. Next week, I'll be talking with a customer. Don't forget to like and subscribe to uh, the channel. And with that, I wish you happy mining. Geodnet, mine the sky.